So uh, when you are able to see me, right? Yes, Mudu. So I mean, so far we have seen like how uh, how we do uh, basic scripting. I mean, recording a uh, use case and adding the transaction uh, controller, recording controller, and how we check the script after just uh, recording it. How do we run it for one user, one night, right? Yes. So so far we have uh, seen these uh, uh, key areas in Udemy. So today we'll see like uh, how we. Uh, do like a parameterization, correlation, and other things. Uh, adding uh, proper transaction names, uh, adding a think time, all those things. Whichever, how the time permits, based upon that, we can do that. Okay. So, sure. one thing is like, first we'll do with the, uh, go ahead with the parameterization and correlation thing. Uh, one thing, just give me one more. So we are good to start now. Okay. So here, uh, see, like uh, as per the uh, I mean uh, standards, the unwanted links have been commented, and their headers also have been commented in the previous session. So either you can uh, I mean uh, like uncomment it or disable it or remove it based upon yourself. Okay. So uh, if the script is too huge or very large in size, we can remove it so that it will reduce the size. So as of now, this is a very uh, simple use case. So uh, it is not that much of huge in I mean game of sizes. So it is uh, uh, it is not an issue for this use case or this. Script. Okay. So now what we'll do is just uh, adding like a correlation. We'll do uh, just one second. So lastly, we saw that uh, these are the areas where we uh, want to correlate, right? And just I will run the script so that you will also have an idea. Okay, so I mean, for every request, we have to see all the request body request headers to make sure that whether we uh, we send the proper request or URL, uh, all the methods, I mean, method uh, contents are properly sent in the request or not. So yeah. response, we can see that uh, what is the exact response. So here, uh, this is the exact uh, area where we see uh, where we receive the uh, value, which needs to be correlated. So as um, I told that we are booking for a flight reservation, like um, uh, I mean, uh, source and destination uh, places have to be correlated. So this is these are the list of uh, places which is available for I mean source that is the starting point, and these are the areas uh, which are the destination. So we'll make sure that uh, it gets randomized for each customer. It uh, it is picking the value uh, automatically or randomly based upon a user or uh, iteration. Because for every user, I mean, all the users will not be booking to the same source and destination. Each user will have their own choice. So uh, 
will make sure that we'll randomize it. Okay. So now uh, to correlate it, this is a function. Yes, you have to add uh, uh, regular expression extractor to this particular uh, request, which is the blazedemo.com. So because we see the response of this particular call for from where we are just getting this value, uh, source and destination. So uh, to this request, we have to add this uh, regular expression extractor. So with the name from port we are giving, from port is nothing but uh, just a starting point, just a name we are giving. And two port is a destination. So same name we are giving here. So I mean values which you have to correlate is these values. I mean normally the values which is inside this uh, double quotes we are going to correlate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. So now uh, this uh, this uh, here uh, the name of the variable is from port and this is the name the same name as can be given here. That is not an issue. So, and regular expression is this. This is the value which we are going to correlate. So, here uh, within the double quote, this is the value that we are going to pick and randomize it. So, here you can see that we have given here dot plus question mark represents the uh, regular expression. So, which will just hold the value which is between these two double quotes, which will try to capture these values and it will try to pick the first occurrence of the a value which is getting listed in the response. So normally the values which is appearing in the response of the request only we can correlate. Okay. If it is appearing in the request, then it needs to be parameterized. So I'll explain you the difference between parameterization and correlation. Parameterization is something user given input. Say like username, password, or address, or any input field where user inputs to the system normally we do the parameterization whereas correlation which is a server generated value for every user or iteration for a same for the same user also it gets changed uh, similar to an example of session id uh, for uh, myself i will have a session and each time when i uh, log into the application say like gmail or yahoo uh, my session id will keep on changing same way for vignesh or suda or jelin each time they log into the system every time a new session ID will be created. So that needs to be correlated. Okay. If you try to log in with the same session ID next time, system will throw as like, uh, I mean, uh, what do you say, like uh, either uh, you don't have sufficient access or invalid request, something similar to that. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, first, uh, I'll just correlate, I mean, with this parameter, so just to make sure that whether it is picking or not, then we will randomize it. Okay. So now to make sure that whether it is picking the values or not, we have to add a plugin called uh, post processor. Inside this post processor, we have debug post processor. What is the purpose of this debug post processor? Post processor is like whether it is uh, these two uh, from port and to port are picking any values or not, or it is throwing any errors that we can only see from this plugin. Just I will run it once. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, already you have installed that uh, plugin like uh, debug pass processor like yeah it is it is available with jmeter 5.0 or any jmeter version which you have you download it it will be available or okay like, like when we uh, uh, when we right click on that we are able to see in the recording controller uh, we have an option called pre processor and pros process processors is that the one yeah post processor here you can see debug post processor these are all I mean, okay. what is uh, components already available within yeah, the yeah. game? So yeah. you don't have to configure, it, I mean, any component. There I are thought. other options like plugin manager where you have to go and click on. You can see the plugins which are already installed and available. New plugins which you can click on and just install, apply changes and restart. It will just update it. No other yeah. issue. Yeah. So if we, if required, we can do that. But as of now, we are good with it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So and what's now, the purpose actually for the debug post processor? Yeah. Uh, I will. I will. I will show you. I mean, exactly the system. See. Okay. Here, uh, for the eighth request, we are capturing the response, right? See, eighth. I mean, uh, these are the values which we are trying to capture. Say, for example, I have given us for uh, the option value uh, to capture as Paris and option value to capture as a Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. 
so these yeah. two values uh, it has to capture for from port and to port okay so to in order to verify whether the this two uh, correlated uh, values are properly capturing the i mean these two parameters are prop properly capturing the values from the response mm -hmm. i don't have any other view say like for this particular eight call i don't i cannot see just it is the response from the server response body and response letter in order to check whether these two parameters are properly picking or not i have to this particular debug post process plugin will help me to see whether it is uh, picking the values or not from here you can see like uh, see paris and uh, this value we can change uh, i'm just uh, giving you an example from port and uh, to port yeah. okay uh this value it is not picking properly i'll see how it, uh, we can change it okay so just for an understanding we can see like uh, this, without this debug post processor I mean post processor just i'm disabling it see now if i run it you won't be sure whether it is picking or not uh that is the reason to make sure whether the value is properly picked or not see now earlier we had an yes. uh, sub request 8 0 now yeah. we don't have so it is just the response of the request nothing else is available so you are not sure whether the value is picked here or it is properly updated in the constituted request or not that is the reason we are updating it okay okay yeah okay so now uh, this moment uh, here from the response uh, what we have response body Now let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay. This is disabled. Sorry. What just happened? Two four is not. Okay. so now we can see if it is working or not
Like, will this, uh, will this will be helpful for our automation, like sorry, performance testing for uh, when, when doing the real time web application performance? Like, uh, what is the main purpose for this debug post processor? Just for a uh, verification, right? Yes. The which one you are asking, like? Yeah, yeah you are yeah, taking the from port and to port, right? Like to confirm whether it's taking the correct one. So will it be useful? Uh, like my uh, my ask is like whether it's you whether it will be useful if you are doing uh, well uh, for our application, right? So well, it will be useful or uh, just for our. Uh, yes, yes. So these are like a key <coughs> important areas which uh, we have it in our uh, uh, for any any uh, performance testing projects. Uh, these are the main areas that it could be. Uh, done or these are the main uh, uh, like steps which needs to be followed for scripting purpose okay. for any application or web even for web service api automation or api testing also we do the same thing so uh, these uh, whatever i'm saying is applicable so okay. it is like uh, these okay. are the practices so that is the reason i'm like insisting and uh, uh, finding the exact area so so there can be different value. I mean, the same values appearing in different areas. Uh, say like uh, you have this value in uh, say like uh, say like from port, uh, Portland, and to port uh, something New York or something. So here also we have different flights and uh, similar kind of flights we have for different locations. I mean, same location, different flights. You can see like Aer Lingus and uh, America and uh, so. So I'm giving you an example here. We can just find the best possible, so I mean, correlation, uh, the best possible way to correlate is like, I mean, the, when you run a script, it will fail because uh, the simple example which I have given is the session ID. Yeah. If you run the same session next time, it won't work. Right. Even that is one example. So considering that as a situation, say like if you are not correlating, considering RTM applications, where we have the excess RF token, excess RF token. If you are passing the excess RF token of today's in tomorrow's request, it will obviously fail. Yeah, okay. That is the reason, uh, I mean, our Redis, service, uh, Redis servers are configured in such a way that for every hour or uh, every eight hours or so, whichever is configured in server, it will uh, I mean, refresh the server so that the session gets updated newly. So okay. that is the reason we do the correlation so that to make sure uh, the session is even though uh, every time the user the script itself will uh, try to make sure that it, it will capture the uh, response from the server and it will send to the server and say that this is a new session and uh, this is the value exact value. So uh, I mean it will like um, what you say like. Uh, so I mean. Say like functional or automation testing uh, for one user, you can do this manually uh, by just doing the script and all. For hundred users, hundred systems uh, or hundred uh, I mean uh, hundred resources having hundred system uh, managing or hitting the request at the same time will be very difficult. So those kind of things can be managed using this load testing tools which will help you to create the realistic load on the server and also measure the performance of the system. OK. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, in that case, okay, sorry to interrupt that. Uh, uh, shall we have a realistic example like instead of going with all these things? Like that? Maybe this is helpful for us to uh, know the uh, basic thing, but uh, maybe uh, after all these sessions, like, uh, can you show with any of our applications, like how we are uh, doing the performance testing? It would be very helpful for us, uh, Muthu. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. I will also showcase. Uh, I mean, the script. Uh, see, for example, even now I can also showcase the script. But I will. I mean, I'll go. I mean, just walk you through this. So basic concept. If you are, if you are good, then I can showcase you at the end. When what are the which I have done uh, with Econet or any other application, so that I can walk you through the uh, different settings which I have done it in the script and other things. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mutu. Thanks for understanding. 
he has this strength right so what we'll do is So there are different ways to check the regular expression here itself. See, you have regular expression te tester here. See whether whether you are properly correlating it or not. Just paste it here and add the regular expression to see whether the proper value is getting captured here itself. So we test it. We can see how many times it is occurring and so. Same way for uh, what do you call uh, uh, for this. From port as well. Say if you add like uh, just to make sure. If you do the test, you can see like uh, when normally the correlated values will be shown in the array. So each time you can see the number of occurrences. We can go ahead with the first occurrence itself. So no issue. Uh, Okay, so now you can see whether the, the values are getting captured or not. Let's uh, replay this. So when you change the regular, I mean, uh, for a debugging purpose, after uh, replaying the script, you can, I mean, do this, uh, select this option, regular expression extractor. Once it is done, uh, while running the script and all, you can go ahead with the text. Whichever form you want, you can either browser or uh, text or uh, whichever you want, whichever type. So normally it is preferred that you go ahead with text. If it is uh, browser, if you select it sometime for loading the page and all, it will take uh, too much time because the rendering and all it will try to do and so. So if you can see uh, see the page, if as it is a simple page, you can see like the view is very simple and uh, it takes very less time to load. But if it is very complex, more kind of UI components are added. It will try to show as how the browser is representing the page. So it will take much time. So you can go ahead with the text option. So now you see like whether it is properly captured or not. This value, I mean, Portland and New York is getting captured. Yeah. So this is a simple example of, uh, I mean, just correlation function and this debug post process is just to make sure that. I mean, during the validation of the script alone, we will add this function to make sure the script is working fine or not. But while during act, I mean, actual execution or smoke test, we just uh, disable it or we can remove it. Because uh, this de uh, debug, each, uh, I mean, uh, plugin which you add is a kind of a load to the script. Or during the testing purpose, it will have it will have a performance impact. That is the reason. Only the actual script and very important components alone uh, as part of JMeter test plan is added and which will be kept as the final version so that uh, those with those components alone we will do the testing. Because to adding too many plugins or listeners will uh, make the script too heavy and it will have a performance impact. And sometimes due to this also memory issues can arise. That is the reason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then followed by we have uh, so here uh, we have uh, like uh, I mean uh, the inputs right uh, which we can give it in the form of CSV form. So here I'll just let you know like uh, how the input parameters can be given. So in, this is the last page where we give the input uh, to finally before uh, uh, clicking on this what do you call it? Uh, purchase flight button to make sure the order has 
got completed successfully right so here uh, for these fields we can give the name address city uh, i'll make sure that it, for some of the input parameters we give uh, the values using the uh, pa parameterization using we can go ahead with csv data set for which is where we give the parameters uh, normally uh, one second config element csv data set config so here uh, this uh, you have to add the file name uh, then the variables like username password whatever the field here we have uh, considering here we have uh, name address city state zip code so on uh, so i'll just uh, create a notepad uh, with a list of uh, values then i'll save it one second Yes. Give it okay. Either you can have it as the dot CSV format or dot txt format. Um, I'll go with dot txt format. No issues. Either Notepad or dot csv file should be accepted. Okay. So the name of the file is test data. Nothing else. Okay. Okay. Here, uh, here either you can give it as a first a first uh, a row as the name followed by comma and address comma just to differentiate uh, each uh, field with the title. But it is not mandatory. There is an option that uh, where we can exclude the first row or just uh, go ahead. Without the heading, also we can give the parameter values alone. That also will work. Okay. Card number. Name on card. Okay. So now I will just give uh, three or four parameters uh, starting with the followed by address. Just showed us something with code. Card type as master, we have credit card number as and number uh, month, right? Which is 12, then year as 2025, name on card as the okay. So, uh, now what you'll do is. Uh, so what we can do is uh, here chilling. Big niche, yeah. Chilling can be anything. Address is yes, yes. Thing we can give this for names I can be uh, so followed by Lisa. Okay, so we yeah. um, have.
Okay, okay. Now, uh, what I will do is pass this parameter name so that uh, during the script execution, it will pick it automatically. Okay, so now what we will do is just the parameter names alone will be passed here. So, how it can be done is uh, first, I will just load the name here. So I will name alpha. Straight up. Okay. So file and loading not required. Variable names. Now variable names alone, what we have to give us uh, whatever it is given in the notepad, we can do the same uh, format here. So this data. So ignore first line only used if variable names is not empty. Uh, if we are giving it as true, it will ignore the I mean uh, the purpose of this field is uh, this uh, the why we are going with false or true is like either if you if you are giving the title then it should be false. If you are not giving the title, you are giving only the test data. It should be true. Then only. If only use if variable names is not empty. Uh, I mean, are you clear now or? Hello? Yes, yeah. yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, no, first line only if variable names is not empty. Uh, variable names is not empty. Delimiter is comma, okay. Uh, allowed the quota data also recycle okay and also answer. okay the purpose of these parameters are like when delimiter is comma separated which makes sure that every parameter is separated with a comma that is what we represent here and uh, recycle on end of file is like once after that complete data is I mean all the data which is being utilized say like we are going to execute for 10 iteration and we have only four data so after completing Mutu, it will start once again from Suda. If it is not uh, true, if it is false, then after say like if I'm giving 10 iterations or 5 iterations, after fourth iteration, it will throw me one error, stating that uh, you don't have sufficient data. Okay, stop thread on end of file, uh, which is false, which means like the end of uh, File means that is like all the data have been completely used, and uh, if we don't have any data, we are saying I like stop the thread. But uh, normally, in some cases where the data are limited, in such cases we normally give false, and where the data are not reusable, in such cases we give it as true. Say like once the data has been used in the system and which cannot be reused, in such cases we give it as true. So the data which can be reused can I mean here we can give it as false. Uh, I mean, are you able to understand or? Yeah, 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 Mutu. Okay, sharing mode is always all threads because how many ever threads you are planning? How many users? I mean, users equal to the number of threads. So here, if you are going to execute with five threads, which is five users, so in that case, all the data will be shared among all the users. Just an example. Uh, one user can also execute all the data, even four users can also execute all the data. So even five users can also execute data, but it should not overlap. Means that uh, there is a situation like uh, where the number of users is more and data is less. In such cases, already data which is being used can be used in the system if it is uh, there is no kind of a deadlock kind of situation is not available. and if the data can be reused and uh, I mean for multiple users, then that is fine. That we need to check with the application team only. Same data, if multiple times used by different users, it should not create a deadlock situation. If it creates, then obviously the data used uh, uh, by different users will fail. So far, we are clear or? Yeah, Mutu. Okay. 
so now these i uh, mean uh, names i uh, mean title which we uh, have to pass inside the script just an example like uh, one second okay so starting with we have correlated uh, two values right i mean even which is it is if it is passing in the next consecutive request those values also to be correlated say like from port to port just we have correlated and capturing the value without the parameter being passed it will only pick the old value if you are trying to pass a new value then you have to give the parameter name here this is for correlation so for these names we are going to change it uh, say like uh, whatever we have configured here uh, name equal to so here we will give it as name and here it is going to be address men city then state we have then we have zip code we have a card type as uh, can view credit card number then credit card number followed by month year and uh, we have uh, name on card okay Yeah. Name on. So I mean, not all the cases where you will have to parameterize all the input values, but here I'm just giving you an example to make sure, like how the parameterization will be done. So I mean, even for applications. I um, mean, when the input fields are mandatory, those fields alone you can parameterize. Other fields you can I mean uh, just leave it as it is because not all the parameter and all the requests uh, needs parameterization and correlation. Only the important values alone can be correlated, uh, from which is of server generated, similar to session ID. And parameterization like username, password are mandatory, which for login we are using, which needs main parameterization. So those kind of parameters alone, uh, we can concentrate in uh, just parameterizing or correlating. Rest all, which are not required, you don't have to correlate or parameterize. Okay, now just uh, I'll run the script to see whether it is picking the values or not. Just uh, one second. Refresh it, save it, and uh, run. Run, run for one iteration, right? Okay. Okay. So let's see whether it is uh, values are in the request. We can see whether it has values are picking or not. See here, it uh, values are not going, which means that uh, it is not uh, properly. Uh, I mean, the values are not properly. I mean, the title alone it is going, but the values are it's not getting picked up. So just a moment. Okay. Testator.csv.
okay so i mean uh, sorry for the confusion like uh, here it is name on card name on card is what is it name on card why it is not picking sudha address srp tool chennai okay zip code zip code is fine why the parameter is not proper okay here uh, we can see like at name is okay address city state is not given here that is the reason hmm let us we can give it as tamil nadu chennai state tamil nadu so here it is going okay okay now you can see name address city state zip code card type okay credit card number okay month okay, year is okay year okay name on card is okay fine so now it should work properly so let's see there was one parameter which was left when which was not uh, given properly that is the reason so now it will be proper okay now you can see input name as sudha address is something srp tool city is chennai state is tamil zip code is this one card type master credit card number is this one credit card month is 12 credit card year is 2025 name on card is star so we are getting the proper input right yeah, hello okay. okay so now we have uh, done the correlation in the previous request you can see that uh, we are getting this uh, values also we can correlate for even the flights which we are able to see like a response data we are getting it as one second this is the request right so previous to the sus of 81 this is the response okay okay so this is one thing and uh, Uh, next is like oh, what in case of you want to check whether it is picking the next consecutive values for the same thread and it is validating properly or not we can run it for three iterations to see whether it is picking the th next next uh, data so and executing the script or not just for the input values alone um, so here you can see that for the first request it will be a uh, request you can see so the and uh, all her details which are is given and for next iteration we can see where uh, uh, what is it picking like jelin followed by uh, jelin whatever the input parameter which we have given like aptm city and other things for the third iteration we can see it is it should be vignesh vignesh and we can see all his details so for a uh, three different iteration whatever the data which is given uh, i mean we have given four uh, data the last one was mine so that uh, out of the i mean fourth we did not give four iterations we have given three iterations so it has uh, for each time or each iteration it will pick a unique data it won't pick the same data right so that is the case um so next we can see the assertions uh, so can we proceed or we can see tomorrow how is it like we are okay i can share the script so that you can check once from your side we can see the assertions and other things uh, tomorrow yeah tomorrow will be fine yeah yes, sure too. yeah so uh, so far i mean you are clear right i'll share the script as well so that you can just check it from your side yeah uh, okay. shall i stop the recording uh, muthu yeah you can stop the recording on a second you might can do it right stop recording yeah done